This car has a top speed of 202 miles an hour. Two thousand and four Ferrari five seven five M Marinello. This is not a three sixty Modena or Modena. This is not an entry level Ferrari. This car is fifteen years old and faster than nearly anything you can buy today. It's a stiff salute to natural aspiration and tall gearing. Make way, make way. I'm rich. Ferrari five seven five M. It's a Ferrari that almost seems too normal looking to fit the traditional mold of what people think about when they think Ferrari. Oh, it's absolutely still expensive, and it performs like you think a Ferrari should, but it almost looks like someone said, mm, I want a uh, Corvette, but not American, or I want a Dodge Viper, but not American. But the people who buy those types of cars don't buy Ferraris. It's not meant for your neighbor, Mitch Grundlebaum, who free bases cough syrup and listens to Pink Floyd records backwards. A 575 aspires to the type of driver who'd appreciate the experience, because it doesn't typically come to him every single day. Ferrari 575M. A post-coital cigarette on four wheels. The Marinello, or Type F133, is a remodeled 550 Marinello. There aren't that many styling changes outside of the exterior, the brakes, weight distribution, engine. Yeah, okay, it's basically a complete overhaul. Better aerodynamics, adaptive suspension, and speed like a free runner snorting a line of crushed espresso beans. Ferrari 575M. For the man with multiple decrees on his mantle, all written in copper plate gothic bold. So you can't read them from a distance. If your garage has one of these in it, then your house also has a study. You know how in a General Motors B body or a Ford Panther body, or even a C6 Vet, the interior makes a noise as the seats and dash move against each other? That noise? And that noise is less than pleasant. Well, 575M makes that noise too, but... This Ferrari features a six-speed manual transmission, not a manual transmission, there's no clutch, not a manual, no clutch pedal, not a manual, and it offers the 5.7 liter V12, also known as the, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Tipo, Tipo? Tipo F133 EG, making 515 horsepower and 434 pound-feet of torque. Gas mileage is 10 city, 17 highway, as one would properly expect from a thirsty speed machine. Because you see, Ferrari introduced a F1 style, I'm going to talk about this transmission later, called the F1. Ugh, everything's racing. It's an electronic, it's an electro-hydraulic manual that's really a standard manual transmission without a clutch pedal and it, they're trying to automate the manual. Imagine if this was what Ford was doing. This is what Ford ended up doing with the, the, uh, oh, the car that sucks. The, the, the base model Focus that had an automated manual in it to try to get better gas mileage and they all kept braking because they didn't know how to handle in-town stuff. This is a in principle, same thing going on here. It does have an automatic mode, and I never put it in. It does have an auto auto switch here, where it will treat it like an automatic. I never pressed that. I kept it in manual mode. When you put it in manual mode, there's no safety. It'll hold those gears. In fact, this little gear shifter, this itty bitty espresso thing here, that you that you make the finger motion, the Italian finger motion, just to hold this. This is like two inches long. All this shifter does is put it into reverse. That's it. There is no park on this car. There's no park feature. Park is just put it in first gear. That's it. Click it down into first and it'll go into first. The Ferrari Grand Tours tend to be front engine V12s. 
in order to bring to mind the 250 GT, the 275 GTB models. This 575 is an evolution of that original 90s Ferrari 550. It's both an overhaul and an homage. And in that respect, while the lack of a proper manual might hurt the eyes of some, there's more value here than just that Ferrari name, or the ghosts of a better car gone by. Ferrari 575M, sponsored by the kind of aimless brown eyes that belong to a person on break from active thought. The immersion of the Ferrari experience overtakes everything else in the world until suddenly you're lost in a fog of exhilaration thicker than a stool sample after a Fiber One Bender. This is the second Ferrari I've ever driven. So thank you to Classic Promenade in Phoenix, Arizona, classicpromenade.com, for opening their doors to us and allowing us to drive this V12 front-engine Ferrari. Thank you, Harry, and thank you, Daniel. So what does this feel like? It's not a whole-shot car. It's not a stoplight drag machine. Even though this engine is the same displacement as a popular LS version, the like 5.7 liters, this Ferrari's engine's displacement is spread over twice the cylinders as an LS, with much shorter strokes of each piston and lots more camshafts. So all the power is up high, not down low. Which means you exercise a 575 Marinello like you would an inline motorcycle. You see that car? I want to pass that car. It's like a motorcycle, you just click down two, and then you're good. And you're surging to the ton before you know it, or, or, or even feel it in this long wheelbase bruiser of a car. Ferraris, uh, from my small town Pennsylvania perspective, I, I imagine those cars as fragile, very expressive, delicate, exotic cars. They were for people who like to eat with tiny forks. Nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> Shoo! Is that a cop? Or yeah, is that no, park it's, ranger? Or? No, it's got a vanity plate. Nice. This, it's, is, this is intense. It gets better when you go faster. <laughs> this isn't what I expected. I didn't know Ferraris can be mean and intimidating. People got out of my way. I'm driving this and I wanted to set a record from North Phoenix to Sky Harbor in this thing. And I probably could have done it, but there would have been no mercy if I got caught though. Dude, I'm in a freaking Ferrari. At least it isn't red. I mean, pull me over red. This silver color, it's nice. It's neutral. Oh, and now you're seeing a Mark IV Supra in the face and you're not going to be able to unsee it. The 575M is equipped with the, here we go, pronunciation again. Fiorao, Fiorano, Fiorano, Fiorano? What is that A doing? Is it short or long? Anyway, it's that handling package, which is a fairly rare brake and suspension and camber package that was on roughly 5 to 10% of these vehicles. If this was the six speed manual version of the car, a true stick, a th true three pedal, uh, supposedly they sell from 50 to 100% more in price than this thing was. So, or so we were told. Which is not to say that this 575M is devoid of any value. Well, the transmission is great when it works, but the problem is the transmission, it, it doesn't behave like we're used to. We're used to getting things now, now, now. I'll, I'm, again, I'm going to go off on this transmission in a bit. It's not that it's bad. It's just different. The interior. When I looked at this interior, I, I, I forgot I was thrown. I thought, this isn't an early 2000s, this has to be early 90s in here, in the way it was styled. And a known issue with these interiors were gummy switches. Whatever material they used for this plastic started weeping. It just got sticky. Sticky like a Sega Genesis controller, or an old Boscov's catalog page. Like, 
glossy paper that's beginning to separate. While I was out driving this thing, I was aware of a lot of the aggressive stereotypes that go along with owning a Ferrari. It's the notion that it's compensation for something, that it's a method of peacocking for people with more hair in their nose than they have in their heads. But what stereotypes often miss about these cars is the reward aspect. And it's not something we've ever really discussed. But before I forget, let's come back to this linear electro hydraulic automatic manual F1 transmission. Okay, this is 2004. This is early flappy paddle tech. It's 2004. The world is using Windows XP, flip phones, and dual core CPUs were just becoming a thing. So gear changes are not instant like what we expect today. They lag, like Counter-Strike on dial-up. It's like this. You click upshift, and then it changes. Click, change. Click, change. That's the lag. You see, it's not much. It's like early dial-up first-person shooters, you're going to be leading your shots. You got to plan for the server. So you plan your shifts and work around it. You drive with your index fingers constantly on these paddles, and you'll be fine. And ergonomically, the wheel is made for you to drive this way. It's like resting your fingers constantly on a game controller's shoulder buttons. It feels natural. About the only thing that feels natural about a 575M. The sticky switches, an emergency brake handle on the left-hand side of the seat that pinches your fingers against the door, forcing you to either twist your wrist backwards or open the door itself to pull the handle. And the optional air conditioning on a car that was $215,000 $890 in 2004, and $295,000 adjusted for 2020. It forces you to live in the moment. The hot, sweaty, sticky moment. You want a slightly uncomfortable, dangerous car that makes you sweat? Get a second generation MR2. A 575M performs the same task at a higher tax bracket. Ferrari 575 Marinello. I want my arm candy to smell like my B.O. Mixed with sauvage and seasonal pitted dates. I want to hear them fat cheeks stick to the leather and peel off. A Ferrari 575 wages a one-car war against the routine. A war against unhappiness. Maybe a car is to compensate for something lacking, but it's far too easy to judge people through a lens of compensation, which isn't fair. Maybe you'll see a Ferrari and think, well, they must have won that war. And maybe it's true. Maybe you'll think, oh, it must be nice. That phrase. But think twice before you say that phrase, because you don't know how many battles they had to lose first to get where they are now. It's for the type of driver who likes to drive. It's a 